So every so often something happens in South Africa that makes me just think like, wow, only in South Africa, like nowhere else in the world could this happen. And once again, the FPB has just proven to me that they have to be one of the most ludicrous boards in the world, not just in our country, but in the world. If you're wanting more context to what I am talking about, I've made a video about this before and you can click on the little icon that's just appeared or moved out to the description below and click on that link. But I'm going to be giving you a brief breakdown of what this actually entails. But ultimately, the FPB is trying to put a new law in place that's going to actually monitor everything that goes out onto the internet. And this is primarily aimed towards content creators. Originally, when this act was still being passed, we couldn't quite figure out if this applied to every single individual citizen of South Africa or purely towards content creators. And at this point, it looks like we have finally got classification on that. It's purely aimed at content creators who are wanting to make money off of their specific platforms. But ultimately, the FPB wants to be able to monitor all sorts of content. They go into platforms like Twitch or YouTube and actually rate them. The FPB is the um, rating board that ultimately chooses you know, what's fit for consumption here in South Africa. And the truth of the matter is you can tell that this is just a ploy to make them more money. It's as simple as that. And ultimately puts all content creators in incredibly, incredibly dangerous, precarious position. South African content creators here in South Africa are trying their hardest to grow, myself included. I'm trying my hardest to grow. And this act that the FPB is wanting to pass is going to put all of our growth into serious jeopardy. So this is a direct quote from the act that the FPB is, is wanting to do. These laws are enacted to give effect to the rights enshrined in the Constitution. The FPA Act seeks to balance the right to freedom of expression with the responsibility to protect our citizens from harm and to maintain social cohesion. And if you read up a little bit more, then we also see it's there to battle the exposure of children to harmful digital content that could have adverse psychological and behavioral impacts. What's crazy to me is that the social media platforms in place already have community guidelines to stop this very thing from happening. But what does this actually mean? Well, for layman's terms, this means that if you are a YouTuber who has a monetized channel, you're going to have to actually send your videos for review before they are published. And this process can take up to eight days and you're going to have to pay an annual fee. And if you do not and you are caught, you are going to have to pay a hefty fine or you can even go to prison. Wow. Wow. Now, there's a lot of issues I have with this act in general, but a few of them that really stand out to me is the fact that there are a lot of reviewers here in South Africa. Now, myself included, I make movie reviews, but there are video game reviewers. There are even news YouTubers here in South Africa, and our content relies on everything being up to date and following trends that are busy moving at the moment. If we have to wait eight days before we can release something, we're going to be so far behind that trend, we're not going to be getting any views, we're not going to be getting any growth. So it's just ludicrous because we have got so many high tier, top quality content creators who rely on trends. And I'm not just that, but I've mentioned this in my previous video as well. This is such a dangerous way to give power over to the government that's going to start censoring us. It's going to allow the government to start basically constructing their own specific narratives by only allowing specific content to be made. That's incredibly scary because the moment you lose the ability to actually communicate with audiences and tell the truth, that's when trouble starts. And finally, my biggest issue about this is the manpower that's going to be required for this to actually work. Now, I don't want to be doom and gloom. I don't. But it's crazy to me how much this country has gone through and almost deteriorated in the last 365 days. Just think, we've had these massive riots and protests. We had all of those riots in KZN. Some of them were up here in Gauteng. All of that damage done. What's crazy to me is I've just moved up to Gauteng. I've been here for about a year now. And I get shocked at the amount of traffic lights that don't work. From my house to the place where I work, there are seven robots or traffic lights. Very often, only one of them works because the rest just aren't in commission. They're not working. We don't have load shedding here, but in the last week, I've lost power three times. These are essential systems that are in place 
to help South Africans just live daily lives and those aren't even being kept up correctly. There's no maintenance on them. The infrastructure is failing. Yet, rather than putting effort and finances into keeping our everyday systems working, the government wants to put more finances into something that's going to limit South Africans and stop South Africa's growth in a content creation and on a global scale. It really feels like the South African government is wanting to shoot itself right in the foot. And why? Because it's just a little bit more money that they can put in their back pocket. But ultimately, guys, I'm opening up the floor to other content creators. They're going to have their say right now. But I really want you to listen to what everyone is saying, because this is actually something that's going to impact a ton of people in this country. Thank you for the opportunity to speak out and voice my opinion about the FPB and the new act. So honestly speaking, I am opposing it 100 percent. But I do believe that there is a place for the FPB to be involved, but just not in this implementation. So one of the things that I want to, to speak about is that if you look at the population of this country, there's about 60 million people. If 1% of those people are content creators and they earn a living by it, so it's 600,000 people. If they had to release a piece of content daily, that would be 600,000 new pieces of content for the FPB to, to monitor and approve. And that takes eight days. So if that was done on a monthly basis, if you look at the um, the manpower required, that would not be something that is um, humanely possible. And it's it sets a very dangerous precedence. And if you look at the fact that most of these sites that people upload content to has its own terms and conditions that the content creators have to abide by, then it sounds like it's uh, it's a bit redundant for the FPB to be involved in this manner. And for me, it's dangerous because it sort of infringes on what you can and can't say. Does this infringe on the internet itself set up as a free speech platform? I don't know. I think that it does. But um, I think that it's, it's time that the FPB gets involved, but more than how they think that they should so it should be in a way where it's a complaints body if there is something that is out of the the norm and isn't appropriate and it's posted then sure get involved and press charges don't just leave it to cyber crime but if you want to get involved that's the way don't try and ring fence content creators into a system that as it stands isn't viable at all and it's something that needs to be addressed. I don't think that they understand the, um, the scope of what content creation is and how it works and the amount of things that goes on. And it sets a very dangerous precedent. So 100% against it. Thank you again for the opportunity to voice my opinion about it. The new FPB Act sounds like it may be a little bit problematic from a point of a lot of us content creators, we batch create our content. I currently have 80 TikToks that are just waiting on standby. And I'm not sure if the FPB would be able to actually handle large volumes of content. Like if I sent through my 80 videos, would I be able to have them by tomorrow so I can start scheduling my content for the month in advance? Or would I now be held back because of processes? And another thing is, I really, really hope that they're gonna be using some sort of artificial intelligence in order to fast track the process. We are in the fourth industrial revolution. So I feel like that it would only be fitting. Um, yeah, I'm actually curious to hear how other content creators feel about this. I just wanted to say that I think this would have severe consequences. Why do I think that? Well, essentially you're taking away freedom of speech from video content creators and game content creators. Regulating what people say I think is extremely, extremely dangerous and can have severe consequences. One of the reasons why I love YouTube is because I feel like I can be myself on it. I can share my opinions on it, my honest opinions, my honest thoughts on stuff. And by having this bill passed, that immediately takes it away. That's at least my understanding of it. I might be missing something. But if this bill gets passed, I think it's going to have severe and damaging consequences on online video content creators and online game content creators. Secondly, I have no idea how this would be regulated. I don't know who would regulate it. And that is another concern. Who gets to make the decisions, what goes online and what doesn't? Is it a board of people? Is it just one person? That is a massive concern to me. And another thing I wanted to say is I think South Africa is growing progressively with its creative people and its creative industries. And by passing this bill, you're limiting that. You're going to limit that 
so, so much. I just find it extremely concerning that the government will be regulating what goes online and what doesn't go online. And obviously within reason, obviously there's certain stuff that cannot be online, but then let the, let the platforms like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and Vimeo and Instagram, let them control that stuff and let them take it down when it needs to be taken down. They're doing a reasonably good job on that so far. I've got a lot more to say on this issue, but my main concern is that the freedom of speech on the internet would be either taken away or regulated in South Africa, and that is not something that I'm happy about at all. I was speaking to a friend of mine who's been in the review business longer than I've even been alive. He's been doing it for 40 years professionally, and he's, his opinion on this entire matter is that, and this is a direct quote of his, the senses are becoming irrelevant, they need to find a new way to make money, and this is it. And I couldn't agree with them more. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you to all of the other content creators who put their submissions through that are helping to actually battle this. This is a topic that is really hectic. And I've been talking about it for quite a while now. As I mentioned, I've already got a video on this topic. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to everybody else's channels. And um, let's try fight this thing. Let's really try push back. Let's try keep content creation available to those in our country. Guys, thank you so much for watching.